It was this magnificent view that captivated the imagination of the founder of Mount St. Benedict, Dom Mayol de Caini, on his first visit to Trinidad in December 1911. And actually, he arrived at this spot in January of 1912. And not only the view, but the fact that when he walked into the hills, he discovered a beautiful ravine with much water. And uh, this was one of the main reasons why he chose this spot. And he had had a bad experience in Brazil early in his monastic life there, where at the helm of a monastic foundation in a place called Chiara in Santa Cruz in Brazil, a beautiful spot, but he had found that for six months of every year, the monks had absolutely no water. It was a very dry and still place. And so when he came to Trinidad to establish this monastery, which he did in 1912, he wanted to ensure that the same mistake was not repeated. Water, a commodity that is so indispensable to our health and well-being, a gift from God. And for nearly over a hundred years, we enjoyed the comfort of an abundance of water as a result of the hard work of monks of the past. The lifespan of the material used in those days to convey water to our monastery visibly showed signs it had come to an end. We had made several attempts to address the deteriorating water distribution system at the Mount, including chlorination, several attempts which didn't work effectively. A major thing we did was to employ a water engineer who was retired from the Water and Sewage Authority of the Government of Trinidad and Tobago, and who had a wealth of knowledge and experience in the field of water management. He spent several weeks here at the Mount examining the system and wrote a very comprehensive report to the monks with recommendations. So we went forward and by April of 2015, the Water and Sewage Authority had come to the Mount and had done some improvements to our intake up in the hills on this side. They identified the source of the water and they moved the intake higher up to the source so that the type of water we were getting now was cleaner and more powerful. We invested in several tanks that was to store this water and redistribute throughout the length and breadth of our estate. Sadly speaking, we continue to get daily and regular complaints from tenants, from pilgrims, and from people who we normally would supply water to. And so I addressed the issue head on. I established a small team and we went through certain areas by foot examining the system. And little by little, we began to realize that there were several defects in the system and uh, the system was essentially corroding. Some lines needed changing and uh, the way in which certain lines were directed was not to our advantage but to our detriment. So we embarked on a massive project to improve the distribution system by investing in lines, by addressing some issues we had and which now has been clarified. There are two sources here at Mount St. Benedict. 
the first source is in this direction, higher up in the, in the hills, which comes from a spring. And uh, this is the source that we would often use to satisfy the needs of the monks and some buildings here. But from time to time, and particularly during the dry season, the water that we get from the hills is not sufficient to supply the needs of the pilgrims who come here every day and of the adjoining buildings. We have another source, which is in, in St. Michael's Estate, a property that was also bought by the abbot founder, Domayel de Caini. And we have established a collection system of water where we have a tank that would collect water from St. Michael's and the pump that we have pumps water to these tanks that you see on the hills and it is redistributed so that all can have an ample supply of water. You would observe as you travel along the road that the lines are now above surface and we have done this deliberately because we have found in the past that lines that were buried under the roadway and under the earth very sheepishly attacked the infrastructure of the mount, the roadway and uh, so on. So we, in this particular renovation of the water system, we decided to make sure that all the lines were exposed so where, wherever there are broken lines or leakages, we could address them directly. One of the major elements in this new improved system is a junction box that we have established with, with which is controlled by the monks using one, what we call a key. And this has the ability to direct water wherever we want it to go. What has affected us here in a very practical way is uh, climate change and global warming. We have seen it before our eyes. When I joined the monastery 31 years ago, there was a much greater supply that we were getting from our sources. Today, the supply is much less. Whereas we are getting a lesser supply of water, naturally, we are being challenged to meet the needs of a greater number of people. The people who visit the Mount, the clients at the St. Peter's home, at the Pax Guest House, at the Drug Rehabilitation Centre and so on. So what it meant is for us to manage our limited water supply in a way that all would be able to get a piece of what we have. I must say that there has been a dramatic improvement in uh, the distribution of the water. And although we have made this massive upgrade to our system here at Mount St. Benedict, including the refurbishing of a high technology pump, we still depend heavily on gravity, and that is the cornerstone of this entire water system. The Lord is good.